This is the series where we talk about the different types of modeling jobs that exist in the industry. Watch this video on YouTube for a quick overview. And as always, feel free to leave your requests and questions in the comments. Let's talk about test shoots. Pretty much every single model, no matter what type of modeling you do, does a test shoot at some point in their career. We'll go into detail, but test shoots can be free or paid. They can have an entire team, hairstylist, makeup artist, clothing stylist, photographer, even assistants, or it could be a very small team, just you and the photographer, and you are doing wardrobe, styling, hair, makeup. The photographer may or may not have multi-talents and be able to help you out. Everything is a case-by-case -case basis. Sometimes you get zero photos, sometimes you get five photos, sometimes you get 30 photos that are just amazing and great for your portfolio and or your social media. Sometimes it's an hour, sometimes it's two hours, sometimes it's eight hours. Sometimes it's at a studio and sometimes it's at a location, sometimes it's an hour away and sometimes it's three hours away. Test shoots can be very plain and basic, meant to be for your portfolio, or they could be really elaborate and have an entire beauty campaign vibe going on. Sometimes you're the only model, sometimes there's several models, and sometimes they'll ask you to pose with the other models if you're comfortable. Sometimes everybody's test shooting just because they want to have some creative fun. Sometimes they're trying to build their portfolio, and sometimes they're trying to create an editorial that they can submit to publications. Sometimes a client will offer wardrobe for styling at a test shoot, but in reality, they're trying to screw over the model and get free social media and e-com pictures. So you gotta watch out for that. Sometimes you're gonna love the photos and sometimes you're gonna hate the photos. Sometimes you never see these people again and never work with them another day in your career. And other times you end up doing multiple test shoots with them or even getting paid bookings and castings because of the connections that you have made at the test shoot. And other times you actually just become friends with them. So test shoots are ways for models to build their book build their connections, get experience, and typically it's free. So photographers will hit up agencies and say, I have this concept, I need a model for a test shoot. And nobody is getting paid. Hopefully you all, when I say all, anybody on the team, so photographer, makeup artist, hairstylist, wardrobe stylist, model, you hope that you get photos that can be great for your portfolio, your social media, and potentially even get you published, which then you'll have tears, which always look great in a book. When talking about paid test shoots, there are test shoots where the model gets paid, but there are also test shoots where the model pays the photographer and or other people on the team. Part two, talking more about test shoots. Part two of types of modeling jobs, we're talking about test shoots. Sometimes photographers have a budget and they offer a payment to the model for the test shoot. I've seen it anywhere from $50 to about $400. And yes, paid test shoots, the model paying the photographer and or other people on the team do exist. They can be anywhere from $200 to $1,000. And you have to decide what's right for your budget and your needs. Now, why would you pay for a test shoot? Well, maybe you just cut off your hair and you've never had short hair before and you need new photos like right now and digitals are cool, but it's not doing enough for you. So your agency may encourage you to look at their list. Most agencies have a list of both free and paid test photographers. So with free test shoots, there is no guarantee whatsoever that you are actually going to get any photos out of it. You may spend all of your time there and end up with zero photos at all from the photographer. For some reason, they just end up not liking them or they move on creatively and never go back to edit any of them. You could end up getting those photos and deciding that you don't like any of the ones that the photographer has sent you. They're not your favorite poses or maybe it just more highlights the photographer's skills than it does your skills as a model so they're not really usable for you. Your agent doesn't like any of the ones that the photographer has sent so you don't necessarily get any photos out of a free test shoot. It's a gamble. So if you don't want to make that gamble and you're like, no, I need photos now, the agency has certain photographers that they know get the types of photos that they get work from in their markets. So 
I think I paid like $150 or $200 for this shoot and I got great photos. I got them back in like a week or two. So you get that demand on time and I ended up with like, I think about 10 different photos from the shoot and they got me a lot of work and they went on my card. So I think it was worth it. In this case, I had moved from Los Angeles to New York and I needed New York photos and I needed them quickly. You can see we kept my hair, my natural curls, and makeup is next to nothing. But some test shoots, you're going to be very elaborate. You may be doing it more to hopefully be in an editorial. This was a test shoot. This was a test shoot. I've paid for two test shoots in my career that I can remember. This was the second one, and I believe it was three or four hundred dollars and came with hair, makeup, and some styling. Some of it was my own clothing. And it was a really famous photographer. Part three, we'll talk about how you can reach out for test shoots, what you should discuss, and how to prep for your test shoots, but that may be part four. Part three, test shoots, how to find them. If you have an agency, let them know that you would like to test shoot. They may hand you a list of free photographers, a list of paid photographers, and they will also keep you in mind for when they get an email in the next coming weeks from photographers asking about who's available for test shoots. Whether you have an agency or not, use the power of social media to DM photographers who are shooting the type of modeling you want to add to your book. You could also try the casting websites and casting apps if you're already on them. Think about the types of modeling you want to add to your portfolio when choosing the photographers to reach out to or from the list given to you by the agency. If you want commercial shots like these, then you should be looking for photographers that are posting this type of stuff. This photographer may be able to shoot this kind of stuff and vice versa, but they may not want to, especially when it is a free test shoot. They are going to want to do what they want to add to their book or social media. So when you are trying to find the photographer, you want to keep those kinds of things in mind and be upfront when DMing them and say, I'm looking to add commercial shots. I'm looking to find a beauty test shoot. I'm looking to do editorial. Only do nudity if you want to. If you reach out to a photographer and they reply back with rates that you do not want to pay, you can just politely say, I'm sorry, it's not in my budget. Thank you for your time. Some photographers are looking to do free test shoots and some are not. That is their right. If there are any releases involved, make sure you read it thoroughly and understand before signing away something you don't want to sign away, like a lot of usage rights. So in the modeling industry, we have a lot of things that aren't really normal and would seem like red flags to anybody outside of the agency, but may not be a red flag. Like a normal person would never change their clothes at work, maybe only once to change into their gym clothes, but the average model will change sometimes hundreds of times on one set. And normally we would say, hey, don't go to a photographer's apartment, that sounds sketch. But there are actually a lot of legitimate photographers who purposely rent out live-in loft kind of spaces so that way they can put their studio in their home. It's right there for them. It's a tax write-off. It's easier. It's cheaper. And it's not always a scam. Photographers get that it's weird to meet each other over the internet and then invite you over to their house. So a lot of times they will be understanding and even they will offer up front and say you can bring a friend if you would like. So that way you can feel comfortable. So stay safe and keep your eyes open for creepy things or red flags as you go along. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a part four about how I prep for different test shoots or if you have any other questions or if I left anything out, I'm gonna leave it here for you to tell me what you need next. You should do whatever works best for you, your career, your time, your budget, and your long-term goals. Your portfolio is one of your main tools as a model to get you work. So you wanna be updating that often to show the different types of modeling you can do, the different looks you can pull off and show that you are constantly working. But sometimes you don't really get photos from your paid booking. Sometimes you're doing e-commerce and they may be cutting off your face and we're not gonna put that in your portfolio. Other times you may be doing e-commerce but they're not telling you exactly what day they're going to release the photos. You forget to look for them and then they're off the site because the thing sold and you'll never get those photos again. The photographer has shot like thousands of photos since that day. so. They don't typically send you the photos from e-com and unless you chase them down on the website, 
you're not really going to get copies of them to use in your book. And even if you did, you can only use so many e-com photos. You don't need a thousand. But you do want to show different types of modeling. So before you even get those bookings, you can do test shoots, like a beauty test shoot, so that then you can use those photos to go to beauty castings and submit and show them what you can pull off. And outside of your portfolio, it's a great way to get experience and to make some connections in the industry with people who you might be working with on other sets. There have been many times in my experience that I have done a test shoot and then because of somebody I met, a photographer, a makeup artist, a stylist, they have then recommended me in another situation and it got me a casting or even got me a direct booking. Because I basically had a long casting with them where they got to see all of the things about me and my personality and my punctuality and my professionalism at that test shoot. But if you get a bunch of jobs in a row where you just get amazing photos and your portfolio is up to date, it, it shows a range of modeling and it is getting you bookings, you don't need to do test shoots during that time. But that may not always be the case. So there may be some years in your career where you do a few test shoots and other times where you do a lot. And it's really great when you change your look. Maybe you've cut or dyed your hair. Maybe you've worked out and gained some new muscles you wanna show off. In those test shoots, you can get great new photos to add to your portfolio to show your new look. Or maybe you've gotten better at modeling. With more experience, you've gotten more comfortable with your posing and learned new poses that you're excited to shoot and you can share that in your portfolio. So there's a lot of great reasons to do test shoots, but if you don't want to do them, you probably don't have to, but I feel like most agents do encourage you to do them uh, even if it's not for new photos, a lot of times to get connections with people you may not otherwise have a chance to meet.